welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I am David Kern, and I am joined by my friend, Matt Bianco. Hey, Matt. Hey, David. Today's poem is by Thomas Gray, who lived from 1716 to 1771, and in the department of perhaps unnecessary but interesting factoids, he, like John Milton, was the son of a London-based scrivener. So he and John Milton had something in common. William Gray, in his anthology that I've been referencing in the Classic 100 Poems, writes that Gray was a wonderfully versatile poet, and though he may not rank among the top superstars, his elegy is probably better known than poems by more celebrated figures. He was friends with Horace Walpole, the son of Sir Robert Walpole, who was Prime Minister of England for at various times in the first half of the 18th century, and it was about Horace Walpole's cat that today's poem was written. Today's poem is called Ode on the Death of a Favorite Cat, Drowned in a Tub of Goldfishes. This particular poem was written in 1741 or thereabouts and published in 1751 and substantially revised in 1768. His previous poem, his best known poem, is called Elegy Written in a Country Churchyard and is much more of a serious poem, given that it's called Elegy Written in a Country Churchyard. This poem is not quite so serious. It's much more humorous and thus maybe a little bit more fun in a lot of ways. So I thought that the best way to approach that, to get that sense of humor, was for Matt and I to alternate reading these stanzas. So without further ado, this is Ode on the Death of a Favorite Cat Drowned in a Tub of Goldfishes. T'was on a lofty vase's side where China's gayest art had dyed the azure flowers that blow. Demurest of the tabby kind, the pensive Salima reclined, gazed on the like below. Her conscious tale, her joy declared, the fair round face, the snowy beard, the velvet of her paws, her coat, that with the tortoise vies. Her ears of jet and emerald eyes, she saw and purred applause. Still had she gazed, but midst the tide two angel forms were seen to glide, the genii of the stream, their scaly armor's Tyrian hue, through richest purple to the view, betrayed a golden gleam. The hapless nymph with wonder saw a whisker first and then a claw. With many an ardent wish, she stretched in vain to reach the prize. What female heart can gold despise? What cats averse to fish? Presumptuous maid, with looks intent, again she stretched, again she bent, nor knew the gulf between. Malignant fate sat by and smiled. The slippery verge her feet beguiled. She tumbled headlong in. Eight times emerging from the flood, she mewed to every watery god some speedy aid to send. No dolphin came, no nereid stirred, nor cruel Tom, nor Susan heard. A favorite has no friend. From hence, ye beauties, undeceived, no, one false step is ne'er retrieved, and be with caution bold. Not all that tempts your wandering eyes and heedless hearts is lawful prize nor all that glisters gold. One of the things that William Harmon says he likes about this poem so much is that last line, not all that glisters gold, because it's not actually glitters, it's glisters. He actually says, not glitters, you ninny. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so Hor Horace Waffle's cat was actually called Salima, so, and he drowned, well, she drowned in a china vase, and so thus this mock elegy was produced. Huh. This has been another episode of The Daily Poem. Thanks to Matt Bianco for joining me. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Mm -hmm.